appreciate you this morning because your word that will come out this morning will pierce our soul and will meet us at the very point of our need. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper, is quick and is powerful. It's sharper than two-edged word. Powerful enough to pierce the soul even into asunder, into the marrows, into the spirits and soul. And is capable to search the intent of the act. Lord, we pray this morning, as your word will be coming out, we pray, O oh God, it will search us and we meet us at the very point of our needs in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate our father, the set man of this church, and our beautiful mommy for the opportunity given to me to be once again in the presence of the brethren. And I pray that the mighty God will take you to the promised land in the name of Jesus. Not only you, but every one of us will get to the promised land in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome the... As, as far as Dominion Word and Prayer Chapel is concerned, we have two grandmas in the house and one grandpa presently. I want to welcome them. I want to welcome you and I pray God bless you in Jesus' name. Mommy, Pastor Mrs. Peters and our mommy too and our daddy, we pray the Lord we empower you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you turn to someone and, and say, the Lord is with you. Maybe you are not sure. Okay, turn to yourself. The Lord is with me. You know, most times, we believers, we forget this cognizance. We, we, we forget that there's a presence of the Lord with us. Hallelujah. The topic for this morning is embracing God's presence. Embracing God's presence. Do you know we serve a God that goes nowhere, but is everywhere. He's present everywhere. If you are under the sea, he's present. Even in the closet of your home, he's present. He's present everywhere. Somebody will say, is the Lord present in the ritual place? Is the Lord present at the shrine? We we'll still go there. He's present everywhere. And that is why we should know that it is our spiritual obligation to take cognizance of his presence every time. All other obligations that we know as believers, like reading our Bible, like praying, like fasting, it is also a believer obligation to constantly aware. That in everything you do, in everything you say, in whatever you do, in everywhere you find yourself, the presence of the Lord is with you. And that is why it will be very difficult for you to do anything against the will of God. And I pray as we move forward this morning, the Lord will touch us and speak to us in the name of Jesus. Let's open our Bible to Psalm 139. Psalm 139, we are going to read through verse, I mean, verse 7 through 12. Is the media with me? I 
just want to establish the fact that everywhere we go, the Lord is with us. Psalm 139, verse 7 through 12. Okay. Whither shall I go from thee, from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uppermost, uttermost part of the sea. Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Ye, the darkness hid not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike. Praise the Lord. This is just telling us that there is nowhere you go. There is nowhere you find yourself that the presence of the Lord will not find you. Praise the Lord. He's omnipresent. He's present everywhere. It's just that he operates with you according to the dimension of the capacity of the presence you believe in him. Praise the Lord. Maybe you don't get it. He operates with you according to the dimension of capacity of his presence you believe in him. Praise the Lord. If you believe in him as Jehovah Adonai, he will be a master unto you. If you believe in him as Jehovah Elohim, is your creator. If you know him as Jehovah Jireh, he will be your provider. If you know him as Jehovah Mekodeskim, he will be your sanctifier. If you believe in him as Jehovah Sah Sabaoth, then he is the Lord of hosts to you. And we continue to fight your battle. If you believe him as Jehovah Sikeno, is the Lord your righteousness. If you take his presence as Jehovah Kwana, you will know that he's a jealous God. And he will never share his glory with any man. Maybe you open your Bible to me in the book of Exodus 20, verse 5. You will know that the Lord is a jealous God. And his glory he will never share with no man. He said, Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hates me. Hallelujah. Our God is a jealous God. And if you have this mindset of what the presence of God can do to you, that is when you will enjoy his presence the more, most. If you don't take cognizance that the presence of God does wonders, that the presence of God is not a thing to be joked with. You should have the mindset every time that the Lord is everywhere. I once said it when I mount the altar that God is everywhere, even at the shrine that the Lord is there. He's not inactive there. He's not there so that they will praise him. But he's there taking the account of what every man is doing there. And when you stand at the throne of judgment, the books will be open. Maybe we should have a clear picture of it in the book of Revelation 20 verse 12. Let's see. Revelation 20 verse 5, uh, 12. 
the media receive sharpness in Jesus' name. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is of life and death were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Back to what I had in the first place. That is the Lord even in the shrine? The Lord is there. But he is there as the recorder of what man doeth. There are difference between book and books. Do you know the reason why it is books? Because accounts of the evil man is written there. So before they write like 10, ten lines to take another person and write the name there, the book is heavy and full because the account of men is there. But the book of life is only one book. There is no body of sin there. You will just see Jumoke Obanea redeemed. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't understand. The presence of God is everywhere. Either in the shrine, either in the bar house, either in anywhere you think of it. But performing different activities. In the shrine is there to take account of what every man. Please display the, the, the Bible verse of what every man does. And that is why it is called books. Because the name are there because they are not redeemed. Their account is being included. Therefore, it needs more space to write them. But you see, the book, another book was opened, which is the book of life. It is not books. There are not many people that are going to heaven. And that is why we must work hard. Hallelujah. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to those things which were written in the book, according to their works. And that is why I say the perception that you have towards the presence of God will liberate you. If you believe Him that His presence is with you as your Savior, then there is nothing that you pass through that the Lord will not save you. When you carry the presence of the Lord, you cannot be intimidated. When you carry the presence of the Lord, you cannot be relegated. Because you will be mindful of his presence to the extent that you will not want the name of the Lord to be put into shame. So whatever will bring dishonor to the name of the Lord, you will do what? You will far, run very far away from it. Hallelujah. I say embracing God's presence simply means being consciously aware of God's presence and be mindful of it. Being consciously aware of God's presence and be mindful of it. When you are aware of God's presence, all the old you, it will be impossible for you to go back to it. The Bible says, when any man is in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. What makes all things pass away? The presence of the Lord. I love the son of Sonny Okosu. He said, the song goes down, he says, All the bad, bad things I used to do, I do them no more. All the bad, bad clothes I used to wear, I wear them no more All the bad, bad friends I used to make I make them no more Cause there is a great change Since I know God Great change Since I met God Great change Since I know God There is a great change since I met Jesus, 
There is a great change since I met God. The presence of the Lord will always make a change in your life. When you carry the presence of God, it will be impossible for you to do the old things you have been doing. Because the Lord is with you. You are a new person. You are a changed person. It is not possible for you to carry the presence of the Lord and be checking your boots and to, to worldly song all in the name of doing advertisement or doing promo or, doing, uh, or marketing your product. I once told some group of people, I said, it is not possible for you to carry the presence of God and because you, some things are not seen but the way you go about it can bring sin upon your life. Getting your products and advertising it to people in a way that will convince people is not a sin. But when you want to sell the product and they will now tell you, you come for orientation, you know, we just wear your bikini and cleavages and cleavages will be open just to shake your bum bum and dance so that people will see what you carry. And you come back on Sunday to handle mic and say, God, let the name of the Lord be lifted. Hallelujah. You don't embarrass the presence of God. In your actions, in what you do, in the way you speak, you are not in the world. I mean, you, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. You will say, Ha! You are not Omaye. How will, you, how will someone call you Omaye and you feel convenient about it? Some alterations you make with your mouth pass several messages across to people and they will judge you according to what comes out of your mouth. So you can't come to them again and say, praise the Lord, let's share the word of the Lord. They will, they will look at you that, what, what is she saying? She don't call Ori a focusibe. See, and she will, it, will, it does not even bother it's not selective in what he hears or what he says when they are backbiting they see you there when anger trends on you they see you manifesting anger the bible does not say we should not um, um, be hungry but you should not the sun set upon it it's good to let your mind out. People that know me, they know that I don't keep my feelings, I don't hide it. I will tell you, even if you are any, anything higher, I don't mind. But I will tell you, I will just turn my mind, I will say it out. And that doesn't mean I will not embrace you. Praise the Lord. What are we saying? Embracing the presence of the Lord. You cannot carry the presence of the Lord. And you will be the one in the party. Running after food. It's not a sin, no. But there are some, you command respect for the presence of the Lord. He's sin over you. I once watched a, 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 once watched a video, a video clip, that that woman, they were distributing food, sharing food at the garden. And she was running, ah, you have not served me, and the food fall on the body. Praise the Lord. You should have a dignity for what you carry. You carry the present that cannot be, 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 be intimidated, that cannot be shattered. So even before you go, go out to party, eat your food, be full. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Anytime we fail to acknowledge the presence of God, we shift position. We shift position. When you are, I once said it, I said, if you know him as your battle fighter, he will fight it for you. But the moment you forget to know that it's your battle fighter, the position is empty. Then you go about seeking help from where help 
is not found. Praise the Lord. When you shift position from God, I said that I said God goes nowhere, but He's everywhere. So when you when you fail to acknowledge Him, you shift position. And when you shift position, your spiritual antenna is faulty. Because our daddy used to do one example to us. My sister, come, please. God bless, God bless you. Please give her a round of applause. As she's with me now. Just move. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. With me, you heard what I said. When you don't appreciate God's presence, you shift position far away from Him to the extent that your spiritual antenna becomes disconnected. And that is why it is very difficult for you to hear Him. Now you will be going to. 30 days fasting and prayer 60 days fasting and prayer you have not addressed the issue you are just addressing the situation hallelujah you are addressing the situation when you shift from God, God's presence in, in, in medicine, we call some things opportunistic infections. There are infections that ordinarily when your immune system is normal, it is very difficult for this infection to set in. But when the immune system is broken down, that is when you see diarrhea coming in, cough coming in, uh, every, all the diseases coming in. But if you keep on addressing the symptoms without addressing the cause, you are wasting your time. So when you shift position from God, you are at risk of many things. Pastor Emmanuel, when we were doing um, life and light uh, service, I think last two weeks, he made mention of Adam. When Adam lost God's presence, that he was, he, 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 he went out of God's garden, of the garden, and the presence of God was no more with him, that he is at risk of many things. He was at risk of many things. Likewise, we, if we fail to appreciate, if we fail to embrace God's presence with our hearts, with our mind. And we shift position. And once we shift position once, we will not stop there. Except we trace our step back. That was what Adam did. If Adam had traced his step back to God, when he fell, maybe we won't be what, where we are today. He failed. I did not see the record in the Bible where Adam went to God and said, Ah, I have sinned. I have done what you asked me not to do. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive. Maybe everything will have ended there. But he did not do so. What did he do? He hid himself. And he was complaining, Lord, I cannot come out. I heard thy voice. But I was afraid because I'm what? I'm naked. And why we? Why did he not accept that he had sinned and Kukuma asked for forgiveness once and for all? The forgiveness that we are now asking now. Hallelujah. God's presence. God shows his glory in us. He made his presence known to us so that we can acknowledge his glory and show forth his glory to people. You cannot carry God's presence and people will not see it in you. You cannot carry God's presence and it will not be, it will not be revealed. 
the Bible says we are the light of the world. That a city that is built under, uh, uh, upon the hill cannot be hidden. So you cannot carry God's presence and the glory of God will be hidden in your life. It will be seen in your actions. It will be seen in your activities, the way you relate to others. They will see the glory of God in you, even without talking. About five years ago, or more than I don't, five years, I can't recollect again. I went to a gathering, went to Futa, one of my siblings was doing a convocation. You know? I said, I saw this man. The glory of God was just radiating upon his life. I, I, did, nobody told me. I knew this is a child of God. So at the end of the, the thing, he now, the, the man now came to my sister and began to talk. And hey, I, I was thinking, I said, I said so. This man is a, is a, the glory of God was radiating upon his life. You will know. Praise the Lord. Not to talk or when he gets to the extent of speaking. He has not spoken enough, has seen the grace of God upon his life. So that is how it should be. That is how it should be. The glory of God is not a thing that can be hidden. You cannot be a child of God. You cannot be God's ambassador and people will not see it in your life. How will you be a God's ambassador and you will still be the one fighting in the street, beating your wife? Shouting and everybody will be will be hearing you when you're today. They have started again. And to, in the morning, you'll be the one to ring the bell. Bagang, bagang. Let's pray, oh, money prayer. What are you carrying? I pray our eyes of understanding will be opened in the name of Jesus. Maybe we should open our Bible to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 10 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Why do you do it to the glory of God? Because you are cognizant of the presence of the Lord with you. So when you bless people, you bless people to the glory of God. When you do the work of God, you do the work of God to the glory of God. When you wear your clothes, you wear it to the glory of God. It's not until you wear clothes and your cleavages are advertising that they will know that you are beautiful. It's not until you wear clothes and you find it difficult to sit down and you are doing like this. You want to pick something, you cannot do it like this. Though it's good for ladies when you want to pick something, you do it like this. So, but when you, when you want to, you know, you want to bed down, you feel you are not comfortable, then why do you put it on in the first place? When you eat, you eat to the glory of God. When you bless life, bless them to the glory of God. Not that you bless... Bless someone and the person will be going and say, ah, or oh, if not because of me. The, the, she will not be where she is today. That is, you are not doing it to the glory of God. You are doing it for your self, self uh, attainment or what would I call it? Embracing the presence of the Lord. You see? Either you acknowledge Either you acknowledge him or not. He does not bestow glory to God. And he does not add glory to his supremacy. If you recognize, if you acknowledge, if you embrace the presence of the Lord. He does not add glory to his glory. He does not bestow glory to his glory. He does not add glory to his majesty. It's just a way of knowing to him that this is my child. And my presence is with him. So you don't need to be told to acknowledge the presence of the Lord. You don't need to be told to embrace his, his, his presence. It is, it is an obligation for you as a believer to acknowledge the presence of the Lord. So when you are acknowledging him, 
You are making him know, you, you know that he's your father, that you don't have any helper than him. You know him as your battle fighter. He fights your battle for you. You know him as your counselor. He counsels you when you pass through the issues of life. You know him as your father. He fathers you. You know him as your mentor that you cannot do anything about him. He supports you in everywhere you go. One of my sisters was telling me like two weeks ago. She wanted to study abroad. And the money she had then, she now said she told God about it and God said she should continue. But what she failed to do, when she was ready to do the, the uh, proceedings, that she now called one of her cousins and said, the cousin is rich anyway and they are close. And said, the amount I'm having now is like five million and I'll still need like three million. And the cousin said, okay, no problem, you can go ahead. And she doubled into it. And when there was time, when the time to pay the three million was set, she, she now called the person and said, ah, brother, how far are we are in this, at this level? And she said, he said, ah, right now. No, he said, he said, don't worry, I, I, I don't worry, I'll call you. Before she even finished the conversation, he had ended the call. She now began to cry. Ha! Where will I have wasted? Where will I, will I now stop it? She called several, severally, she called him and he started postponing and postponing and postponing. She now went back to God. And she, he said, God wanted to show me the mighty power of his majesty. That he did not involve him that he was, she was ready to start. That now he trusted his brother, her brother. I mean, she trusted her brother that something, something will come out of him. And God showed him that, showed her that when you put your mind or trust on human, they are bound to fail you. She said, you know what, my sister? She said, the person that her husband had knew for five years was the one that gave them the three million. So why do you put your trust in men when the presence of the Lord is with you? Why do you look after things that will fetch you nothing when you carry the presence of the Lord? See, those people that are in the world, in the dark, they recognize the presence more than you have. They understand what it means to carry the presence of the Lord. Somebody was telling my mother when we were passing through something. And my, brother, my mother told me, said, Jumoke, I have not received any message from God, but I'm trusting in God. And that person did not even talk to my mother about it. And she went ahead to pray. I don't know where she, she went to. But I don't think it's church. They now told her. She's the one that came back to tell my mother. She said, Ah, mommy, mother, love, become to real on you. Mama, mama, suffering you because I know you will not go. And what they told me, I was bad food. She said, they, they told her that this woman you came purposely because of her, she will not come. That the way she's seen her, that she carries something she does not understand. That this, this thing that she's going through is already settled, even if she comes here or not. So the people in the dark, they recognize what you carry. If you don't know what you carry and you cannot embrace it. Hallelujah. So the essence of God's presence is that he's interested in us. He is mindful of us. He wants to engage with us. And that is what the psalmist says in the book of uh, Psalm 8 verse 14. As 14 or 4. Psalm 8, I mean Psalm 8 verse 4. That the psalmist, psalmist asked God that who is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. So, the Lord is mindful of us. He's in love with us. 
He wants to engage with us. He wants to love us. So the only obligation we have is to allow him and render ourselves, as in submit ourselves to him. He wants to engage with us. He wants to know everything about us. He wants us to engage in when you eat, when you are passing through some things, when you, in fact, to the least, to the least of your, of what you do, the Lord is interested. When I want to walk at home, I have so many things I want to do. Ah, I will tell God, God, make this thing easy for me. Even in our shows, so, I will be telling Lord, I don't want this thing, this stress to tell on me. Help me. I don't want this stress to appear on me. And I will be doing the work and it will be easy for me. That is work shows, oh, not to talk about other things that the Lord wants you to involve in. There's one of my orgas. She will say, she cannot tie gele. She don't know how to tie gele, but she ties gele best on Sunday. She said, I told God, I, I will never be late for church. But God help me because I like gele. I want, anytime I want to be on native, I don't want my gele to, to take most, most of my time. And every Sunday she does it. And she looks beautiful. But any other day, oh, she, the gele might be anything. It can be wrong. But on Sunday, she said, I told God about it. And she is helping me. When, when she, made, she, she told me about the um, testimony, I was ah, gele. <laughs> so, the Lord is even interested in your gele. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as much as the Lord is interested in you, any little thing you want him to be involved any little thing, tell him. We were looking for a key in my house, car key. That day my younger sister is with me and she wanted to deliver. And it now dawned on me, we've been looking for the key since afternoon, car key since afternoon. So when it was around evening, it now dawned on me that this car key will be needed when we are going to the hospital. We searched and searched and searched. And I heard the Spirit said unto me, you did not involve me. Ah, I said, God, help me, oh, please, this key, we must see it. I told my husband, go and sit down. We will see the key. Lo and behold, it's not up to two minutes. Pamela just came with the key. I saw the key inside the shoe rack. <laughs> so God is interested in you, in everything you do. When you are bothered, tell it to God. There is no friend that is more can love you as he does. When you have this burden, tell it unto God. In prayers, even in thanksgiving, you don't even need to pray. Just worship and believe that it is settled. Hallelujah. So why do we run away from him? Why do we disconnect ourselves from his presence? When we disconnect ourselves from his presence, we disconnect ourselves from purpose, hope, and help. When we disconnect ourselves from the presence of the Lord, we disconnect ourselves from God's purpose, from hope, and from help. Because of our time, I will not expatiate more on that. But quickly... I want to tell us about the five obligations. Believers' obligations to God's presence. Believers' obligations to God's presence. One, God's presence is a promise we must hold on to. God's presence is a promise we must hold on to. You know, when Jesus Christ was leaving, what did he tell the apostles? He said, I live now. I'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house. He said, I will come back. But till then, till then, what did he say unto them? He said, I will give you a comforter. That is the Holy Spirit. To teach you all things all things God assures us of his presence as we journey through life 
Do you know what he tell unto Jacob? He said, surely I am with you till the end of time. We see that in Genesis 28, 20. Genesis 28, 20. He said, and Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me, I will keep me in this way that I go. And we give me bread to eat and drink remnant to put on. 21. 21. So that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. If you read further, the Lord replied him and said unto him that my presence will be with you till the end of age. He told the apostle, Jesus told the apostle in Matthew 28, 20. Say, surely I will be with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Surely I will be with you always and my presence will be with you till the end of ages. No, the verse where he said, Surely I will be with you is. Is it 20? And behold. No, no. 28, 20. Let me see 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things wherever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always unto the end of the world so the promise he gave to the apostles you see the same promise is still given unto us in this present time two God's presence is a relationship we must pursue God's presence is a relationship we must pursue you know to enjoy true friendship and relationship with the father we must pursue this with our soul we must pursue this relationship with our soul. Psalm 63 verse 8. Psalm 63 verse 8. I'm rounding up. The, the time is now on our side. Psalm 63, Psalm 63 verse 8. My soul followeth art after thee. Thy right hand uphold me. What did the psalmist say there? Say, my soul. What, what does it mean to follow hard? That is to follow with all your mind, with all your heart. And when he did that, the hand of the Lord was with him. So it's a thing that we should pursue. It's a friendship that we should pursue with all our soul. That's the second obligation. Three. Is a thing to desire. The presence of God is a thing to desire every time. Activities are so much, we are so much more, much indebted into activities of the day, of the hour, of the week, of the, of the year, that we fail to recognize the presence of God in our lives. Walk, 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 walk. We even forget at times to pray with God. Eh. I'm late already. Bath, take a bath without, without talking to your maker. Without desiring to know him more. Without desiring his friendship. Hallelujah. So, in his presence, we experience a deep communion. A deep communion. Communion. And connections that transcend all earthly pleasures. Have you not been hearing message or be reading the Bible and you forgot that you have spent up to two hours reading the Bible and you take pleasure in reading more, in digging more and someone will tell you uh, call you, did you forget the party? We are going, we have party and you, you, have, you say it in your mind this thing that I'm going is more than party to me you desire him more desire his presence more the Lord bless us in Jesus name 
Please display Psalm 27 4. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and always the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his presence. What is the meaning of inquire? What we make you inquire is your desire. You can never inquire what you don't desire. If I want to make friends with our mommy now, and I want to really make friends with her, I will first of all go and search about, let me, who, who is she? Is she really a person that I can go out with? That is the same thing we do when we desire the presence of the Lord we, we, we inquire in his temple we try to know more about him obligation number that means we are not following is that four or three number one who can tell me number one quick number two Number three. Number four. So that means you are not following me. We have number three. I, I, I said three. I'm going to four now. Four. God's presence is a friendship we must preserve. God's presence is a friendship we must prefer and preserve. We preserve what is precious to us. We undo it with care. So always should our friendship with God no room for sin. I said God does not go, God, God does not go anywhere. But our sin will make us, we push us away. God is where he is. We run away from God by our sin. What can separate us from the love of God? Is it life or death? Is it written in Romans? I think Romans 38. Romans 8. Please, let me display it. The first place time is not on our side. Romans 8. Is it Romans 8, 38. 38. Let's see 38. <laughs> For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. 39. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation.